Hello, everyone, and welcome to an unexpectedly high effort intro for the next Books and Beer Hangout. Thank you, Evo. Uh, my name is Jeff Moriarty, and our topic today are Google Plus communities. We have with us John Ward, uh, who I need to bring back into reality. John, are you with us? I am with you. Well, welcome. <laughs> Thanks for having yourself. me. Thanks for joining us. Tell us what you're drinking. My name is John Ward. I'm a writer. I'm also working as an illustrator. I also run the Writers Discussion Group community on Google+. We have just under 9,300 members right now. And I'm drinking a Red Bull. I don't drink alcohol, but at least now I can get buzzed with Evo and Jeff together. So. Nice plan. Nice plan. Jeff? This evening I am drinking a Truck, truck, I have no idea. Trasong, T word, Trucker 2020. Trucker. That's yeah. how they Right. Which uh, is a Scottish ale and 10% ABV and no dinner. I should be in the uh, alcoholics community by the time we're done here. So. <laughs> nice. And uh, it is one of those days. So I'm slamming out a hop slam tonight because uh, I can only get those a certain number of times this year. And so I'm going to be enjoying that. Well, while you're finished pouring, uh, let's get right into this. So, John, uh, Google Plus Communities, why were you excited about them? Why are you excited about them? Well, I started a uh, personal circle on my from my personal profile shortly after I joined Google Plus like a year and a half ago. And in that circle, it was devoted exclusively to writers. And each day I would make a post to that group and ask them questions, or we would talk about different things. Whenever they had great, there's a great advantages to doing it through a circle, but there was always shortcomings. And Google Communities has really filled in a lot of those wish list items that we wanted to have all along. What do you, what do you mean by that? So give me give me an example of a wish list you couldn't do through normal circle sharing. Well, one of the things that we discovered early on was that. Um, with the circle, we all the content that I would send out to the circle would be related exclusively to, to writing. But whenever I would do the sh circle share with people, I had people complaining to me saying, hey, I added all these people, but some of them were talking about the car they bought, what they ate for dinner. It's not just devoted exclusively to writing. Sure. Well, with communities, that's all you get if you have good moderators who keep everybody on track. And that, and that, I think, is to me that one of the key factors is that you talk about all the things that make you interesting on Google+. But when you're in a certain community, unless that community is a very broad focus, and I suppose those are fine as well, but the niche-focused communities, you're probably only going to hear people, again, with good moderation, talk about that. Now, you mentioned earlier that you're writing the community that you run, the Writers Discussion Group uh, on Google+, has about, how many, how many 9,800, 9,400, almost 10,000? It's 9,280, I think, right now. A stupid number. The, the top author slash publishing, shing, publishing slash writing Google Plus community out there. You have the biggest community, yes? I believe so, yes. I believe you do as well. So that, <laughs> that's great. That's a good accomplishment. How how'd you do it? Um, whenever I started the group, um, I think one of the main reasons that we grew as quickly as we did was because I had that very focused writing circle. And on day one, I sent those people an invitation, which was about 300 people. And they were all very excited about it. And so they invited a bunch of other people who weren't actually in our writing circle to join as well. And then I'm not sure if it, our growth rate, rapid growth rate, triggered something with Google, but I believe Google started to promote our group through their services. We'd have people join who said, yeah, I saw notice on YouTube or I saw notice on different Google affiliated sites right. about communities and it recommended that I join yours. And so that first month and a half, we were growing about 250 to 300 people a day. Wow. Um, some days we'd have 500 people join. It's really tapered off recently since we've, um, I've tried to narrow our focus more um, and I altered the group description and stuff to make it clear that we were appealing to authors and people who are writing books. Because um, 
I don't mind if bloggers join, but we don't really talk about blogging. We talk about writing books. Right. And so they're not going to find content that is as, yeah, as on top of Yeah, they're not going to get them. what they're looking for. I mean, yeah, if you're, you yeah. want to stay focused on it, if you want to write a book, you want to be the community of people who are actually trying to write a book when they're done with that. So not a, not, not a newspaper, not a magazine, not even uh, – well, I, I guess short stories are okay. But, I mean, at the end of the day, there's there's got to be a book that comes out of this. So it helps that keeps it niche and that keeps it focused. I think something that's worth mentioning too for people watching is that when the Google communities opened up, it was just you know wide open. Anyone could make a community on any topic they wanted. It was all over the map. And now I think the dust is starting to settle and we're seeing some of the larger communities shift in terms of focus a little bit and adjust as they've grown, as well as the amount of moderation that's happening in those particular communities. Now, how do you approach the, the moderation and cultivation of the, the content and people in your community? It's almost like raising children. Um, there's times when you have to be very strict. 9,400 children. <laughs> there's times when you have to be very strict and times when you can ease off and let them do their own thing a little bit. Because, um, you know, none of us want to be you know, pressing our thumb down on members all the time. You know, the membership doesn't like that whenever we're complaining <laughs> about some off-topic post or what have you. And we don't like that. We want to be in a community where we can have time to, you know, make posts and comment on posts and participate in the actual community instead of spending all of our time being police officers. And um, I think that we're actually getting, getting into a good groove now where our membership who's you know, they, people who regularly participate, they understand what we're going for and they understand how to, you know, interact with us through the community. So have uh, one of the cool things I'm, I'm a moderator of a community. Jeff's a moderator of a community. We run the digital publishing community in case anybody out there cares. We're a lot smaller than John's group. <clears throat> um, and, and I actually do kind of enjoy putting the hammer on the um, yeah. But beyond that, we're, we're starting to get some new moderation controls. Um, we, we do have a little, uh, some easier way to find the people that are rotten, and I, and I think that's just going to get better. Um, but you know, if you go search right now, Google Plus communities for writing groups, there's a lot of them, right? There are a lot of them. Um, so do, you, do you think we're oversaturated? Here we are two and a half, three months in. Um, are, are we done? Are, are there room for more? What do you think? Uh, I mean – if you can make a writing community and appeal to some niche focus, go for it. Um, I'm always having people wanting me to add categories devoted to each specific genre. Mm -hmm. And I always push back because, you know, I don't want to get into that. Um, I want to have a community that welcomes writers who are working in any genre. But if you're able to create a dynamic and exciting community where you just focus on romance or vampire stories or whatever you know, go for it because there is a demand out there for it. People ask me to do that on a frequent basis. There's people looking for those type of communities. Now, you know, sure, there's a lot out there, but are they all being actively used and developed and cultivated? I'm not sure about that. Yeah, my evidence Some, is contrary. Go ahead. ahead. I'd throw in, um, before anyone jumps in and makes a community, look around and find some of the ones that are out there because – you know, no, all the communities may not be as big as John's community here, but some of them, you know, even smaller ones are very effective. It's really, uh, as the saying goes, not about the size, but what you do with it. And a community that's well curated and has very active people in there contributing, whether it's on, you know, being a writer or, or publishing or a specific genre, steampunk or science fiction, uh, you know, get in there and get involved versus starting your own if there's something already out there. Hey, and John, what is your what is your take on the concept of, and Jeff's comments spurred this on, um, and even what I said earlier, there's a lot of communities out there. Some of them are dead. Some of them are stagnant already. Um, I personally don't think there's a lot of cachet in being the owner of a community or the moderator. Um, it, it, for if it, You could argue that it just makes more work. But if there's one out there, um, 
be the cultivator. Go go do the work. You know, add add the great content to that. It does does that sound like a good plan? I mean, obviously you couldn't you can't really moderate. You can't delete. There's some of the things you really don't have the power to do. But nonetheless, you could still contribute, couldn't you? There's a great opportunity for people who are willing to do that. I have members in my community that I love every time they post because every time they post, it's right on topic and it's thoughtful posts that some people I get jealous because I'm like, man, I wish I would have written that post. That's, that's <laughs> so good. And you know, I love those members and I'm sure any community would love to have membership like that. Um, but yeah, and if you're willing to do that, there's a, that's a, a great advantage because the membership of that community will get to know you and you'll attract a following where every time they see your name pop up that you've generated a new post, they know, oh, I'm going to read this one because this one's it has good content on it. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. The communities, John, um, when you're not managing your um, 9,375 children. I, I, I'm gathering you have a counter there so you can keep keep track. Um, <laughs> what other communities do you find valuable? Um, I really like the community you guys have. Um, you guys get a dollar. Digital publishing community. Um, there's a lot of um, great content in there and it's a lot of, you know, we tend to focus on, you know, Hey, I have an idea for a book and I'm going to write this book. Okay. Well, we'll talk to you about it. You know, you want to tell us your ideas? You'll have 50, 70 comments. Um, when I go to your community, it's, I've written a book and I want to know how to format it for Kobo or some, you know, really technical, you, you guys have a lot of high content information in your community that I really enjoy. And, um, you get a, yeah, that's one of the things that attracts me to digital publishing. But I'm also a member of, um, you know, like Scott Sigler has a community that's devoted to his fans. And I think that's, if you're a published writer, you should have a community set up just for people who read your books. Um, ideally, you'd want to have your fans set it up for you, but, you know. Well, I've also heard that, I mean, Scott Sigler has a community set up for Scott Sigler to talk about Scott Sigler. He's the only one in it, but he yeah. loves it. It's really cool as well, so yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of communities. I'm, man, I can't even think of all. I'm, I joined a bunch of them. My participation has dropped off as my membership has climbed because I don't have as much time to devote to um, other communities. But I still get notifications from several several of them, and I'll pop in every now and then to make comments when I can. When well, you're, on, take, I'm sorry, Jeff, go ahead. I was going to take that as a segue to our, our closing here, since we're almost out of time. Did you have another one to get in, no, Evo? No, or? no, do it. Okay. So, taking on that, you know, you start your own community, you start running out of time, you're having trouble getting involved. What advice would you give to someone saying, "Hey, I want to get involved with some of these Google Plus communities. Uh, where do I start?" If you're starting a community, one of the best favors you can do for yourself is to narrow your focus. Go into it with a clear definition of what you want your community to be. Um, the second best thing you can do is find people who will be great moderators. I have 22 of them work, working with me to make my community what it is. And I could not do it without them. So that would be my advice. Lean on your friends, I think is exactly. what you were saying. Hell yes, the only way to do that. Awesome, John. Well, great info. Thanks again for having a great community. Uh, we're both members, and we see lots of really great content being shared there. And more importantly, perhaps, thanks for being on the show with us today. Thanks for having me. And uh, so let's do a little closing announcements here. First off, uh, Jeff and I are speaking this weekend. Yes, I realize it's this weekend, and that doesn't give you a lot of prep time, but deal. Uh, we're speaking at the Changing Hands uh, Indie Author Conference here in Phoenix. We're talking about, yeah, digital publishing. You know, that's kind of what we do. Uh, and I know I do not believe the sessions will be recorded. However, we will make our decks available online and give away some other really cool stuff. So if you happen to be in Phoenix, uh, come by and see that. Also, uh, we have two classes, the Quick and the Red, and the Four Weeks to Finish class. Both of these are designed to help authors get published finally. Those are all available. And any day now, we should have our very first book, yay, of the long list of books from ePublish Unit and Kevin.
coming out. For now, I'm just teasing it. No, I'm not telling you the name of the book yet. I gotta wait till it's all done. And then so, so you can find all about this that I just mentioned there at our website. And you can find notes about this. You can find links to John's community and the other stuff we talked about at booksandbeer.com. The Books and Beer Hangout is a publication, or more a production really, of e Publish Una. We help authors survive and thrive in a digital world. For more information, classes, and education, please check out epublishunum.com. For Jeff Moriarty, I'm Evo Terra. Thanks for watching.